Hey everyone, I've got another chess game for you to look at today. This is between Stockfish and Lielenstein in the CCC9 Gauntlet Bonus Free Tournament. Um, there's quite a lot of tactics and shenanigans in this one. Um, Stockfish is white, Lielenstein is black, and E4 is played by Stockfish. Black plays D5, and we get into a Scandinavian with Queen takes D5, Knight C3, hitting the Queen. And the queen moves to a5. So after d4 and c6, this is our standard stuff at the moment. c6 allows the queen to retreat to maybe c7 or d8. White plays bishop d2, x-raying the queen on a5. And black plays bishop to f5. So again, this is all theory. Knight f3 is played by Stockfish. Knight to f6, developing a piece. Bishop c4 from Stockfish. And Lielenstein plays e6, opening up the bishop on f8. White plays queen e2. To develop again, allowing whites maybe potentially castle queenside. And Lielenstein's had enough of this bishop on d2, x ring the queen, so they drop the queen back to c7. Um, this maybe prepares the move b5 as well. So before playing queen c7, b5 couldn't be played due to knight takes b5, and the bishop would just attack the queen. So the queen moves, preparing this. Uh, but Stockfish just drops the bishop back to b3, so they can't play b5 with tempo. Lielenstein develops their bishop to b4, and Stockfish now creates a threat of knight to h4. So, threatening to take on f5, and the c6 pawn is pinned by the queen. So Lielenstein has to be a bit careful. In the game, black play bishop takes c3 here. Um, and I was just thinking, maybe white could play knight takes f5 here, but actually bishop takes d2 with check be played and after king captures black can simply play queen a5 check um, and after c3 black picks up the knight um, and black is just a piece up so after bishop takes c3 stockfish just recaptures with their b pawn so they've doubled the pawns on the c file but they still have this threat of knight takes f5 so for this reason leaving this time drops the bishop back to g6 maybe trying to reroute it to h5 and for this reason, I think Stockfish now plays g4. So this move stops bishop to h5, bishop to f5, and also maybe prepares g5 at some point. So this g4 move actually isn't really an attacking move, it's more of a controlling move in this middle game at the moment. Black plays knight bd7, developing another piece. Uh, and there's several moves that white can play in this position now. I was thinking knight takes g6 could be played. After h takes g6, play h4 and expand on the king side. But black's actually doing okay after queen d6 and g5. Uh, after knight d5, if white plays queen f3, black can play knight to e7, just reroute the knight to f5. Uh, and even though black's got the two knights versus the two bishops, um, this g and h pawn are far up the board now, and usually knights can be used to expose um, over expansion from the pawns so yeah like you can see there the knight's just going to jump into f5 and have a very nice outpost so stockfish didn't take on g6 i guess the main reason is that the knight can take on g6 at any point so you may as well leave the, the knight there instead stockfish now castled queenside and Lielenstein now launches their pawn a5 up the board preparing a4 stockfish could play a4 here to stop a4 from black uh, but after queen d6 and king b1, b5, it looks as though black's getting a bit of an initiative. After a takes b5 and a4, hitting the bishop, once the bishop drops back to a2, black can play c takes b5. Uh, but luckily white has this resource of knight to f5, hitting the queen. Queen a3 can be played. Um, it gets a bit complicated now with d5 from white. So it's hard to say who's winning this game. The analysis gives that bishop takes f5, g takes f5, and e5 is slightly better for white after rook h g1 and rook b8. Uh, the analysis is that white's slightly better, but in a practical game with two humans, it's very hard to see who's winning this game. It looks so black's got quite a nice initiative to me. Um, so this a4 move could lead to risky variations for white. In the game though, Stockfish decided to counter a5 with f4 instead, preparing f5 and trapping black's bishop on g6. Bishop e4 is played by black, attacking the rook on h1. If white moves this rook, I think they're in danger. Rook hg1, black can actually play a4 here. Um, and there's some variations that we can go through now. 
if white just plays bishop c4, b5 can be played, attacking the bishop, bishop d3 takes, takes, and castles from black. White can play f5 to continue some sort of initiative. Um, but I feel like black gets an advantage with queen d6 now. Um, after f takes e6, black can play queen a3 check, king b1. Uh, and black can sacrifice the pawn by playing rook a, e8. After e takes f7, rook takes f7. Black's hitting the queen. After king G, queen g2 and knight d5, black's hitting c3. And to me it looks as though black's got a better position here. They've got the two open files. And white's king isn't exactly safe in this position. In this position, stockfish can still move the rook. But again, a4 is a very good move for black. Bishop takes e6 is also an option for white here. After f takes e6, they can try g5. But I think a3 takes and queen b6 is just really good for black. Threatening queen b2 checkmate. So in this position after bishop to e4, Stockfish actually played a good move. They didn't move the rook. They just kept it there and played an attacking move with g5. Hitting the knight on f6. If black takes the rook on h1 here, white can play g takes f6. And they're going to try and get two pieces for the rook. If the bishop moves away to say d5, white can play f takes g7, hitting the rook, rook g8, and now they can play f5, where three pieces are now hitting the e6 pawn. If castles, c4, and white's going to pick up the bishop on d5 because it's simply got no more spaces to go to. So after bishop takes h1, and white plays g takes f6, Black could also just play knight takes f6 and give the two pieces for the rook with rook takes h1. After a4 and bishop c4, white has the two bishops the rook, so definitely has the advantage. So I don't really think black would like to go into this variation. So after white plays g5, instead of taking the rook straight away, they play a4 here, attacking the bishop. The bishop moves to c4 and black takes on h1. White takes on f6, and bishop to d5 is played. f takes g7, and rook g8. Now you may be thinking this variation looks rather similar to the one previously, uh, after white plays f5. Uh, but actually, white's triple threat on e6 doesn't work in this position. It's slightly different to the previous variation, so I'll just quickly show you. After f5 here, the bishop is still on b3, and the pawn is on a5. In this variation, the bishop's on c4, and the pawn is on a4. And the tr difference is that now black can actually just play bishop takes c4. After queen takes c4, play knight b6, and the threat is no longer there for white. White still has a very decent position, but not as good as the previous variation. So for this reason, this position, why didn't white didn't play f5. They instead played bishop to d3, eyeing up the h7 pawn. I was wondering what would happen here if black took on a2. I feel like that was a good move. After king b2, uh, black can go in for this weird variation where they play bishop to b3. If they play bishop d5, I think c4 will be played and the bishop will be trapped anyway. So bishop b3 is a good move. After c takes b3, a takes b3, white can defend with rook b1 and rook to a2 and king c1. So it looks as though black is building up some sort of attack, but I think white just barely escapes. Black can play c5. Um, white can play rook takes b3. After c takes d4, bishop b5. Rook takes g7 and king b1. Black can play queen a5. And white plays knight to f3. King e7. And this variation is quite long, but after rook b2, captures, captures. Uh, rook g2, captures. Black captures on b5, and white actually ends up a piece up after king c2 and queen a4 check. Um, so even though white is a piece up, black does have three pawns for the piece, and it's not an easy endgame to convert. So it makes me wonder if black should have maybe got in for this. Bishop takes a2 idea here. Instead, Lielenstein played b5 here. So they're trying to launch an attack against the white king. White plays rook g1. And we should remember here that actually white is the exchange down. After all, that shenanigans in the middle game. Lielenstein plays queen d6 here. Maybe threatening queen a3 check. 
Um, but white actually comes up with a really good move, knight to f5 here, attacking the queen, defending the pawn, and maybe preparing knight to h6. Queen a3 is played by black, and I should note that if king b1 here, this actually loses to queen a2 check, king c1, and queen a1 is checkmate. So after queen a3, Stockfish plays king d1, black takes on a2, and Stockfish plays a very resourceful move, bishop to e1, just giving the white king a space on d2 to move into. Queen b2 is played, and black's idea is simple, just to launch this pawn and try and get a queen. But Stockfish seems to have it all figured out. In the game they played king to d2. And now I think Leland Style actually made a mistake here. They played king d8 in the game. But actually b4 may have been an option as well. Preparing queen takes c3 or b takes c3. White is pretty much forced to play c4 so they can't get into these dodgy variations. Um, and after knight to b6, if white now captures the bishop on d5, black can play knight c4 check. Uh, and after bishop takes c4, black can get a perpetual with queen c3 check, king c1, queen a1, king d2, and queen c3. So b4 in this position was very much an option. The only problem is after b4, whites can escape in a different way. So they can play c4, knight b6. They don't have to take this bishop. That's the main point. They can play knight to d6, check instead. And once king d7 is played, they can play c5 and just lock everything down. Of course, black can take on d4 here. But then white can play queen e3 and they trade pieces. If f5 to stop, bishop takes h7. White can play knight to f7. And the knight still attacks on b6, so knight c8 can be played. Knight h6, hitting the rook. If the knight to e7 captures, captures, and white captures on b4. It seems as though white is coming out on top. After a3, c4, bishop to e4, and captures and captures, and bishop c3. Uh, yeah, you've got to say white is very much in the driving seat here. The queen can capture on e4, and they've got a really pot. They've got a great pawn far up the board, and this bishop is just covering so many squares for white. Maybe this is why Leland standing going for this b4 move and played king d8 instead. But after king d8, Stockfish just plays knight to h6, and I feel as though white's gaining a grip on this game now. After king c8, black gives back the exchange with knight takes g8, rook takes g8, but now white can play bishop takes h7. And this game gets a bit complicated. Rook a8 is played by Lielenstein. And f5 is played by Stockfish. In this position, Stockfish could have got a queen straight away with g8. But after rook takes g8, rook takes g8. Lielenstein can push for a queen anyway with a3. And Stockfish will be forced to play rook to a8. After king b7, rook a5, king b6. It will end in a perpetual if white just keeps on moving their rook up and down. So rook takes a3 is got to be played. After queen takes a3, white is still in the driving seat, but they do have to give back the rook. So for this reason, Stockfish just played f5 first. a3 is played by Lielenstein, and now they get a queen with g8. Rook takes g8 is played, bishop takes g8 is played, a2 is played by black, and Stockfish plays bishop to g3, so it opens up the file for the rook to take on a1 if need be. King b7 to move away from the check. In the game, Stockfish took on e6 here. I was thinking bishop takes f7, but this actually is a blunder. Amazingly, b4 just is good for black. Um, after king e3 to avoid any checks, black can play knight to f6. After bishop to e6, black can play b3. And suddenly, black's doing reasonably well. Bishop c8 check, king takes c8 and queen a6 can be played to stop a1 but the king d7 queen a7 king e8 this position is now given as very even and it's very hard to decipher who's actually winning the game so for this reason stockfish didn't go in for bishop takes f7 they took on e6 instead attacking the knight f takes e6 is played and now bishop d6 from stockfish knight b6 is played bishop takes e6 from stockfish and Black gets a rook on a1. This is another weird feature of computers actually. They never really seem to get a queen when they promote. They always seem to get rooks because it's enough for the other side to trade off. So Stockfish actually takes on a1. 
Knight c4 check is thrown in, King d3, and black takes on a1. Stockfish captures on d5, c takes d5, and bishop g3 from white. And now there's a lot of manoeuvring. Queen c1 is played, threatening knight to b2 checkmate. So queen e7 gives white the space. King a6 is played, queen e6 check, and knight b6. And in these variations, you think bishop to c7 would just win for white, but actually none of this works due to the perpetual checks from the black queen against the white king. So queen g4 is played by stockfish, queen f1 check, queen e2 to block. And I think queen c1 would be a better move here to maintain this idea of playing knight c4 again. If the, after h4, queen g1 queen f3, knight c4. I think white still manages to win the game with moves like queen f6 and knight b6. And queen f3, knight c4 again. King e2 and queen c1. It looks very risky, but white has resources with queen f6, knight b6 and queen g6 to protect these pawns. And I'm going to be honest with you, by no means is this an easy end game to win, especially for a human player. I think I'd struggle really badly because knight c4 looks like a dangerous threat to me. But in the game, queen g1 is played by Lelenstein, and queen f3 is played by Stockfish. Again, knight c4 looks really dangerous for black, but actually after queen f6, uh, white's actually given us winning in this game now. If knight b6 in this position, white's can play king d2, and they're going to try and hide on this b2 square. If b4 c takes b4 can be played and i'll mention again bishop c7 is actually a drawn end game due to b takes c3 here after king takes black has queen e1 and we'll just perpetual the king so again why does have to be very careful in the game though king a7 was played after this check um, and stockfish manages to win from this position now they play queen e7 king a6 and they play queen e1 so a targeting the queen on g1, threatening to swap off. Knight b2 is played, king d2, queen g2 and king c1, knight c4, and queen e6 is played by stockfish. And I think after knight b6, uh, this is game over now because now white can finally play bishop to c7. And after check, the king can just hide on b2 and there's no more perpetuals. Um, so this is game over pretty much. After king b7, queen takes b6, king c8, uh, white gets in this nice position and plays bishop e5 check. And Lilienstein finally gives up with queen c7. Stockfish plays queen takes c7 uh, and that is checkmate. So again in this game it's very hard to decipher where the computer went wrong because fr quite frankly there's ridiculously strong engines. 3000 plus elo. Um, but I, re I really think black may have gone wrong in this position. After f4, of course, bishop e4 is forced. g5. And black plays a4. I think this was the correct move. And this all seems logical. I just think black should have gone in for maybe bishop takes a2 here and just gone in for this end game when trying to get the perpetual. Otherwise, I think white's just demolishing black on the other side of the board. So I think this was Black's only option, really. That's just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. I hope I did it justice. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Please drop me a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel if you want to watch more videos in the future. I'll see you next time. Thank you.